Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Tor Olson, Software QA and Tech Support over here at Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to be going over the caption and subtitle formats that we support for our importing and exporting. Now, this tutorial is a little more catered around what happens after you're done with your transcript and you're ready to export, but we will have a separate tutorial on importing transcripts and what different file types do for you. So right here, we've taken our transcript that we gotten back from Speechmatics or Watson, and we've fully edited it. So we have a full transcript. And once I, and once I think I have a satisfactory transcript, I'm gonna go ahead and click on export, which will bring up the export dialog. From here, I would wanna choose which file format I'm gonna export to. Now we have a few options, and we're just gonna kinda go through them uh, one by one. The first of which is the most straightforward, it's our simple plain text file. Now when I export my file, if I have speakers identified, I can choose to include those speaker IDs in the text file that I'm going to be exporting. I can also choose to display the time code. Now this can be really helpful for if you're logging or you like to take... We also have the ability to display your time code. This is useful for if you're doing any logging or notation and just want to be able to go back to your clip very quickly and find out where that spoken piece was. Also, if you have your own unique timecode for your clip, you can choose that clip starting timecode and the transcripts timecode will be added to it. So you have an accurate timecode. So you have a timecode that is the same as your clip. You can also choose how you want that timecode to be displayed. Say if you want to have your start and end timecode, you could also have your timecode and a line break. Or if you like to bring your or if you like to bring your scripts into an Excel spreadsheet, you can also have a timecode and tab afterwards. This way you can ingest into ex this way you can this way you can import this way you can import your text file into spreadsheets and have them be delimited so that the timecode and the word spoken are side by side. In this case, I'll just choose our start time code and choose our ability to export. From here, I would just want to choose where I want to save those text files to. I'll name it something like mascots transcription and go ahead and click save. If I go and open up that file that we just created, you'll be able to see how it's displayed in our text file. So those are your text files. If I wanted to export a subtitle file, we have a few other options. We can export it as a SRT, an STL, or a VTT. These are formats that are used primarily in social media captioning. So YouTube and Facebook are the biggest examples and web video subtitling. If I were to choose one of those, you'll see some similar commands such as being able to include speakers, change your starting time code, but also how you're gonna to wanna to display your lines in your subtitle file. So what our maximum character length of text lines is going to determine is how long a singular line is going to be. What can happen is that when you have lines that are too long, the text can become really cramped on the screen. Usually a good starting point is to choose a number of 60. And you can also choose the number of lines that are gonna be on the screen at any given time. In this case, I'll keep it at one. I could also choose to add a little bit extra time for my subtitles to be kept on the screen. So this is great for if you want a slight delay between one set of lines and the next. Especially if your talent takes a big pause between one line and the next, it makes a lot of sense to have a little bit of a delay for that subtitle to stay on the screen. Again, like my text file, I would just go ahead and select export. I could choose where I want to keep my SRT file or any of my subtitle files. In this case, I already have one set up for my SRTs. I could again name it whatever I like. And back in my finder, my SRT files export, I can find my SRT. With my SRT, I should be able to click and drag it into text edit to be able to view it. Notepad should do the same thing on Windows. From here, I can see the unique way that SRT uses its notation. 
these lines where you see the time code should not be adjusted, but if you wanted to make a quick change to your SRT, you could from here. Now, if I wanted to export a file format that dealt with closed captions, I would want to create a SMPTTT XML file. So XML files are used for closed or open captioning in broadcast television and are primarily used to keep network programs up to federal standards for the hearing impaired. So that's why they're very important. When I select that, it'll give me the option for my caption standard. There's a quick crash course. CEA 608 is for standard definition and 708 is for high def. So we'll just keep it at 708. Again, the obligatory include speakers and changing starting time code. Now the nuance with XMLs is that they should typically be put out at 32 characters maximum. This is just the standard for XMLs for closed captioning. I could have the captions pop on or I could also decide to have them roll up two lines at a time, three lines at a time, etc. Or I could have them typed on the screen incrementally as they're spoken which is our paint on option. Additionally, we have our ability to keep our subtitles on the screen like we did before. From here, I would just choose to export, choose the folder where I'm gonna be putting my XML files. And now that I've created my XML, I should be able to find it and if I wanted to be able to import it back into Premiere. If the captions don't start showing up right away, uh, please be aware that you need to bring up the caption display toggle into your program monitor. You can find it here by clicking the little plus in the program monitor, and that will bring up the ability to edit the toolbar and add XML captions being displayed. Now I have a fully functional caption file that I can be able to view. Oop and edit, because I definitely need some edits in this case. If we go to captions, and select my XML file, I can now make adjustments here. I know for instance that I don't want my eyes to be obscured through the shot, so I'll select all my files and be able to orientate them as I see fit. Now there's one more file format I wanted to go over, which is JSON. If I choose export and choose JSON, what this enables me to do is to export exactly what we see in our transcriptive panel into its own file. So this is useful for, so while this isn't very useful for subtitling, so while this isn't very useful for subtitling or adding captions, it is useful for if you have multiple people in your studio using transcriptive and you want to pass on what you see in your panel so they can have the same thing in their panel. I'll just go back to my root folder Go and find my JSON files, save it there, and if I wanted to, I could then choose to import my transcript, choose a JSON, and go find the one that I just created. And as you can see, I have the exact same transcript with each individual word having its unique timecode. Now you might have noticed there are some other options such as clip, sequence markers, and speech analysis. And these are important export options. And these are important export options, but they're not transcription, caption, or subtitle formats. We'll do an overview of those formats and how they can be really useful for searching for keywords in your transcripts in another tutorial. But for now, if you want to take a look at transcript of yourself, you can find the demos on our webpage at digitalanarchy.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.